he was the greatest piece of ass I ever had, and I've had him all over the world. Then Johnny Fontaine comes along with his olive oil voice, getting charmed. And she runs off. Of course I know who you are. You think I'd have you come into my son's life without checking you out? But I hired you for your abilities as a teacher, not as a fortune teller. Now, don't give me any arguments. The ice is gonna break! We know very far. I take what I just... Creda Judas Sotella non ego. Eventus Stotora Magister. Pace requiescata. You know, that was the time I was most frightened, waiting for my turn. I'll never put on a life jacket again. What do you think I am, huh? What do you think I am, fucking worm like you? I told you, man. I told you, don't fuck with me. I told you, no fucking kids. No, but you wouldn't listen. Well, you stupid fuck. Look at you now. How do you know of Jarrell? Well, my fullness, as I explained to you before, I'm about the best there is. Revenge. Well, hold it, sir. What, what were you two doing? In the shit house, in the dark. Were you going down on him? What's the matter with you? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Radio Karate. It's been a long time since we reconvened the show, and I'm glad to have both Derek and Wayne on the show. How are you, Wayne? Good. Long time no see. Uh... Absolutely. Derek? I'm awesome. A.K.A. Daryl? <laughs> <laughs> Daryl signing in. <laughs> Finally, finally, he managed. He managed to make a, a video, video video appearance, which is great because uh, uh, when recently, when Kayla and I were doing the Murdoch, um, the QF two Murdoch, uh, Howlin' Mad Murdoch series, and that's still in in progress. Um, Derek said he, you might you might actually want to be in. in like part of an episode. I said, if you don't want to sit in, we're glad to have you. You'd have great takes on stuff. And you, you said a guest showed up <laughs> and wouldn't leave. <laughs> it was not leave. It was the damnedest thing. And it's, I was trying to be as inhospitable as possible and still would not leave. It was crazy. Yeah. It was like a Seinfeld thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Anyway, we're guys. We're going to talk about a bunch of things because the last time we recorded anything was the Shang Chi, um, and I can't remember what else was there was on that one. But it, but anyway, we savaged that one something fierce. Mm -hmm. And then uh, since then, there have been a shitload of films, including the uh, the following. So first off, guys, um, the I wanted to do, we wanted to do a Doctor Strange episode uh, for uh, the Multiverse of Madness, and it's been so long. What did you guys think of that? I was a little bit disappointed, Derek. I was I was a bit disappointed too because I went into it they were hyping up the multiverse stuff a lot and they pretty much went to three different universes and like two of them were just dumb jokey universes and then we get to the thing with the Illuminati and they get wiped out pretty much like a bunch of jobbers by Wanda so it, it was all a bit disappointing. Well, yeah, especially yeah. when you consider that, like, uh, Black Bolt, Black Bolt has now turned into the Iron Mike Sharp of the Marvel Universe, according to them. Like, he literally got taken out like confetti with a vacuum cleaner. Um, and that was, that's, that wasn't uh, the way to serve the, uh, the, in, the uh, Inhumans. Like, you, the, that's, that's a whole universe you could actually create and get, make a lot of money on, even if it was just for TV. Yeah, they. I, I think they just don't care about the Inhumans, especially after the way that TV show flopped. Yeah. But if you, if you were going to bring them in, the fact that they brought in Reed Richards, we got Black Bolt, and uh, I guess the version of Captain Marvel that Monica Rambeau's mom, and who was it? Oh, it was the uh, British Cap's girlfriend as British Lady Cat. Yes. And Professor X. Out of all of them, only Professor X had like an inkling of being cool. Yeah. The rest of them, I mean, especially Reed Richards. Reed Richards is like the saddest damn thing. You're there, 
You're the guy that everybody for years has been saying, you got to cast John Krasinski. You got to yeah. cast John Krasinski. You get him in there, and Wanda basically just like unravels the dude in two seconds flat like he's nothing. It was yeah. just a mess. It's embarrassing. Uh, but Wayne, what about you? Did you, uh, did you enjoy it? Did you thought, did you think, yeah. God, this too high expectations? What's the story? No, I, I got what I expected from it. Um, I didn't think it was bad. Um, like you said, they took the Illuminati out way too easy. Um, that, that part of it, there, there was a lot of things I liked in it and, and sitting through the movie, I was like saying, uh, you know, like they played him up that he was a lonely guy. And I was like saying, well, where's clear. And then they had her at the end. And I was like, oh, okay, now I've, that's good, you know, because mm-hmm. um, that's what. Um, but I was, I was, um, I liked it. I was fine with that movie. Um, the thing is strange with the Marvel movies is the comics. I never got into. I never got into Thor, and I never got into Doctor Strange. Mm. Um, but those are the ones that I ended up. I end up liking the most out of the whole. Well, especially what's going on right now. It's the only ones I have interest in. Yeah. Well, what about the, um, the, the, this is the thing I didn't understand. They brought back Sam Raimi for since, for the first time since Spider-Man three, I suppose in the, um, early two thousands, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. he came in because the original director was supposed to be Scott Derrickson. Yeah. Uh, I think he did the, was it insidious or the, Con- I forget which one, the conjuring mm-hmm. or insidious movies, but he wanted to make it like a full on horror type movie. Like it was a lot darker. Mm-hmm. And Marvel was like, you can't do that. We don't do that dark. Yeah. So they brought in Sam Raimi. And I did enjoy the horror element. Sam Raimi, the horror stuff that he put in was like some of the best stuff in the movie. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, they're so used to hiring cheaper talent, let's be honest, that it didn't seem a little off brand for them to, to go to hire a, a name director and probably pay him shitloads of money for it. I think that was just because they were desperate at the time because they could have probably just grabbed some video director or some guy who did commercials or sitcoms or something but they were like we hyped up that this is going to be a different type of marvel movie yeah and they kept hyped up the horror stuff and then to like hand it to a guy who directed five episodes of big bang theory probably <laughs> wouldn't have <laughs> resulted in what they wanted yeah so they had to go to somebody like sam Raimi. Yeah, See, it's, it's, I, it's, yeah. Sorry, Wayne. Oh, sorry. No, I think I was more pleased with this mu- movie because um, everybody was so hyped up about the multiverse Spider-Man movie. Where I just was just like, I don't know. I just kind of shrugged it off, and everybody went gaga over that movie. And um, this was kind of a, a better take on that multiverse stuff. Okay, well, let's go on to uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. I would not see it. Would not see it. Did, did you guys see it? First of all, Derek. Uh, yeah, I saw it. Wayne. Oh yeah, I saw it. Okay, thoughts, please, Derek. Uh, now, as I said, I was disappointed in Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. I actually liked it. I was okay. just didn't like it as much as I expected to. Thor: Love and Thunder was dog shit <laughs> from start <laughs> to finish. People can try to act like it's not, and I know it's a whole lot of the same. People just hate it because it had what's her face as a Thor, and she's a woman. No, it was a terrible, terrible, mm. terrible movie. It was like the dude who made the previous Thor Ragnarok didn't make this one because it was such shit. And I don't even want to say his name because I always butcher it. Taika Waititi or Waititi. There you go. Because I pretty much love everything that he's ever done, but this was just terrible. It was just awful. And they What's wasted it? Christian what? Bale so badly as the villain. That's the biggest crime. Okay, first off, let's let's do a little, we have to do a little, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, branding test. So if it's dog shit, let's pick another dog shit film that, that com- and compare it. Like, was it worse than this? So let's go with um, the the... God, what was it? Um, I don't know. Like the, the, I was thinking, yeah, Iron Man three. That's a good one. Worse than the, or better? See, Iron Man it's, three pissed me, pissed me off. So I wouldn't. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't pissed at this. This one would be like, uh, remember that Fantastic Four uh, that Josh Trank directed? Yeah, yeah, that's bad. It's like slightly better than that. Is how a, I a good a good gauge would be like Master of Kung Fu, like that. That's kind of middle of the row. That 
that got me because they brought back that Iron Man three villain. Yeah. So it's it's better than that, but just slightly. Okay. And it's sure. it's, it's way it's better than Ms. Marvel. Well, okay. So Captain, Wayne, Captain Marvel. Wayne, so Wayne, are you on are you on board with Derek for in terms of Thor? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it's just bad. It was just they made him look like a moron. Um it was just I don't know, it just I, I know that it happened in the comics, but do, do they need to bring everything in the comics that happened within the last five years into these movies now? And that's my problem uh, the, with a lot of the stuff. Derek? The thing, the thing about Thor being a moron, it's been my issue with the way they presented Thor in the MCU from Jump that they didn't want to bring Thor in because they've been doing Hercules since his yeah. first appearance. He's just a big goober, wants to have fun, blah, blah, blah. And that's not Thor. That's Hercules. Thor is an entirely different character. And so this is they just basically took the jokey Hercules character that they started with and made him even worse. Well, except that actually Chris Hemsworth really is good at comedy. I mean, he he really is. It is a role that's suited for that him as an actor. It's just that, um, like, if... If in the same way you wouldn't want to make um, Captain America into Deadpool, you would want to keep the character as close to what it is as as possible because that's the strength of the character. Same with Superman. Superman's supposed to be the all American Boy Scout, not some uh, <laughs> not a <laughs> epiphile <laughs> who's now getting replaced. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. Um, so the next one was uh, we'll go with Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I have to say I, I was disappointed by this film and I, I didn't expect it to be good and I didn't think it was good, even though it made, you know, probably I think something like 800 million. It definitely made its money back. But that whole idea of this, it, what the biggest thing that bothered me, Wakanda was supposed to be this chiseled, mm. perfectly like superior um, civilization and they – <laughs> they made it like look like weak as shit in comparison to the Atlanteans in no time at all. And that, that, that just suddenly exists that just suddenly come out of nowhere. And plus they may as well have gotten Louis Guzman to play fucking name no, no more submariner. And I don't understand why they had to make him Hispanic. Like he, the, he, he, again, you don't, he's not, he's supposed to be Atlantean, not, you know, you had to go and find a Hispanic actor. If you're going to find one, then find a better one. I think, in terms of the um, the the wokeism, the sort of like the all inclusiveness, I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek, I, I understood the reasoning behind why they changed the Atlanteans and they went with the Aztec gods part of it, just because they wanted to be they wanted to make sure that they could differentiate from Aquaman. Because sure. The, DC got there first, and then they did him as a Pacific Islander. Or I don't know what Jason Momoa was supposed to be in that movie, whether he was Tongan or Asian, uh, uh, yeah. Samoan. Or, Samoan. Yeah. yeah, but he was something from the AAPI, so they had to do something. And they landed on, it was clever to land on the whole uh, Tez Kalukalo, Mukalukataka, Hukamukahala <laughs> God thing. And the design was cool and everything. I, I also agree. I wasn't a big fan of the actor who they yeah. chose, but they could have picked a better guy for that role. Easily. Because uh, dude was just basically there. He was, he's been somebody you look at and you go, oh, damn, that's king of whatever Mexican Atlantis this is. <laughs> right. Right. It just, he just didn't suit the part. I mean, like, I, I, I don't know, maybe they really uh, decided this is going to be a throwaway because they were not doing another Black Panther. Maybe they just said, well, we'll, do, we'll make whatever money we can on this and call it a write off because we're not planning on going any further than this. That could very well be it. I don't think, no, I think they, they are, though. Yeah. It, they're setting it up to make the sister Shuri. Black Panther Shuri. I think the problem with Black Panther, because, like, the performances were great. Uh, Angela Bassett was. Awesome. She deserved her Oscar nomination and all that. It's just that the choices were bad. Mm -hmm. One, killing off killing off T'Challa was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. It's like, I understand that you guys are grieving, but the character doesn't have to die just because the actor did. Like, no. You've been playing a, a fellow for 100 years. <laughs> you can change the actor. So doing that was dumb. Yep. I don't think that the, uh, the casting of Shuri in the first movie was fine. She was supposed to be the snarky geeky girl but 
if they knew what they were going to do with her, you should have picked a better actor because she does not have any of the it you need to lead anything. No, because she, she doesn't have that. And the thing with the kid was dumb. Mm. Them nerfing a, uh, Wakanda was kind of yeah, crazy. It was like, oh, uh, Star, yeah. Star Trek The Next Generation would do Worf. Worf is the baddest badass you ever seen. Then right. Green Alien number five comes in, tosses Worf all over the bridge like he's a punk. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Wayne, did you enjoy it? I, I don't know what your score. Um, we, we didn't, we're not doing scores. We're just saying like good. No, bad, I was expecting different. to hate. I was expecting to hate it. I've heard, mm-hmm. I heard so much bad stuff about it. And it wasn't as bad as I thought. I liked the Boston scenes because I'm from Boston. I knew where that bridge is. I, you know, <laughs> walked over that bridge a million times yeah. and um, seen where that fight was. And it, you know, looked great. Um, I like that. Um, the the place in MIT, like, you know, where that, that was. I know where that is. It's, there's like a recording studio down around there. But uh, so that that part of it, it kind of surprised me because I didn't even know they were filming it in Boston. Um, the other the stuff I didn't like is that how... This, the Atlanteans could fight on land better than the Wakandans, and it didn't make sense. And then they could get right into, like, it was easy to get into the, the country. Yeah. You know, he just kind of walked up but, on the shore. Oh, we oh we, we made a force field that, that's no good in water. Yeah. Yeah, so why couldn't the American Marines just get through, you know? Exactly. And, why um, couldn't guppies? Yeah. Uh, it just, th- that didn't make sense. Um, uh, you know, they... They should have done some kind of thing where they made it so the what's the the actor from Creed the you know the bad the villain from the first one oh the, um, uh, you know Mike not Michael B Jordan the, uh, the Kill, Killmonger yeah Killmonger yeah, uh, yeah yeah they should have made it that he took over the mantle for um, for Black Panther or something like that you know just to, some kind of weird thing like that to to keep it going you know. <laughs> Hey, Meg Ryan played two characters in Joe versus the volcano. Why couldn't you get? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Derek, you wanted to say yeah. something. Uh, the thing with how uh, they had Atlantis just like wipe out Wakanda is they were trying to do the thing from the comic books. And the yeah. issue with that was in the comics, Namor had the Phoenix Force. He was like Phoenix Namor. So yeah. it didn't matter what technology Wakanda had. Mm. The Phoenix wanted to wipe out your, your town with a wave. It was going to happen. Yeah. And this, it was just, hey, he can swim through our aqueducts without <laughs> anyone knowing. And this, we're the most high-tech society on the planet, but we right. don't have security cameras anywhere. And we know a dude who can, who can breathe underwater is coming to get us. It, it was just dumb. Right. I I never liked the character of Namor ever. Like ever since I read comics forever, I just never liked the character. I thought it was always stupid. And so it didn't it didn't bother me that he sucked because I, I'm not a big fan anyways. I do have to say that the wing ankle wings, there was no way to make those not look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> And they, they looked didn't make really him, stupid. <laughs> he didn't. They didn't make him look enough like Spock. They didn't give him a Spock haircut. <laughs> yeah. One second. <laughs> that that Wiggy and the horse legs behind <laughs> him. From this, pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> I don't have a like at work. I have uh, Microsoft Teams, and I have. Um, Moonbase Alpha as my background with the with, uh, space out the window. I have the uh, thing that should have destroyed the planet Earth from Eternals where the celestial is coming oh, up through yeah. the ocean. <laughs> That's that, my backdrop. Uh, okay. The thing that in eight more Marvel movies since, no one's mentioned that a whole new mountain formation has just popped up. <laughs> in the yeah, isn't it like, like a big hand or something? Or? Yeah, half a head <laughs> and a hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just really, really quick my wife wants to say sorry <laughs> sorry for taking me away but also that ant-man was shit <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway and uh okay except for rocket and mantis she liked them what about uh, wonder woman 84 i deliberately did not want to see this after i saw the um af- not because i had an anti-dc thing it just didn't look very good from the trailers that they finally ended up releasing. And because it was also the pandemic, it was tough to go out. I think that one suffered more from the pandemic than anything else because it lost money. But at this point, um, 
Uh, I mean, it was it was questionable whether Dune would it would make its money back because they had to end up streaming it as well. So uh, Wonder Woman eighty four, Wayne, let's go with you because it was such a new order. New order was featured heavy in the uh, in the in the soundtrack. Yeah, and they sort of left it at just the the ad for it. It, it was bad. It's like that. <laughs> to be honest, in America, like barely anybody knew who New Order was, unless you you know maybe if you were in California, if you were in Boston, it was underground. Um, for it just I hate it when they make an an '80s movie that's not the '80s that was realistic. Mm-hmm. It, the realistic '80s in America back then was Bon Jovi and just shit music, really. Just, Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are going to hate that when they hear this podcast, but it's the truth. Now everybody rewrites history that they all listen to Depeche Mode and the Smiths, but it's not the truth. It's not the truth, actually. And in fact, they got more popular after the fact. Like, I I, I remember hearing more. I actually heard a New Order song on regular radio in 92 when they released uh, Regret. Um, but other than that, I had to listen to college, like university radio to hear really like indie, well, what would be considered indie stuff. And, uh, yeah, you're right. Like the mid eighties would have been fucking, you know, too fast for love or something by Motley Crue. It wouldn't have been, uh, you know, it would have, it would have been, you know, like the Eurythmics or something. And just the whole look of it looked cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it looked, it, the special effects were crap. The fight in the mall was ridiculous. The, you know, you could have seen that whole thing on the commercial for um, tennis with Serena Williams. I don't know that if you guys had that over there, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just it just it was horrible. It was, I was bored. Um, it just the, the other one was so good and this one was so bad. They didn't need to beat you over the head with the '80s. It's like okay, it's set in, and I guess Captain Marvel kind of did the same thing where um, it had to have blockbuster and all the you know. It was kind of along the same lines as that, uh, but not at least she's likable. Mm-hmm. But um, like Wonder Woman's likable, but um, right. they didn't need to bring, bring back Steve Trevor. There was no need of that. It was silly. Um, but overall, it just it just looked bad. Yeah, was, the effects were bad. They I don't know if they played it cheap. Um, I, again, I didn't see it in the theater, but just from watching it, you know, on a regular TV screen, it just didn't look good at all. Well, there's there's a similar complaint that might be leveled against Ant Man, Quantum Media, but we'll talk. We'll get to that when we get to Ant Man. Uh, Derek, did you see Wonder Woman? What'd you think? Yeah, um, it was it was bad. It was <laughs> uh, it was bad with the caveat that I did understand what Patty Jenkins was attempting to do. She was trying because she was a fan girl of the Linda Carter '70s Wonder Woman. She mm-hmm. was trying to make a movie that embodied like the spirit of that problem with that is the 70s linda carter wonder woman was terrible <laughs> like we all like linda carter we all like, like looking at her and the, yeah but it wasn't a good show and no. so trying to do something that embodies the spirit of that you were pretty much going to make a bad movie because you were basing it off of a bad tv show yes and and it it suffered in weird ways because the choreo- fight choreography in the first movie was awesome fight choreography in this one was like Patty Jenkins herself did it. <laughs> like, like they didn't hire a guy to come in and do any of the fight stuff. The yeah. cheetah was cheetah was just unnecessary because they didn't mm. use the character properly. Is is just a lot of, that was dumb. Setting it in 1984 was stupid. Like we we just did like World War One. Can't we get to the modern times in the present with this character? Why do you keep doing these flashbacks for some god awful reason? Yeah, it, it only in the so certain context, I suppose it can work, but it would it, it wouldn't make any sense. And I didn't understand the artistic decision, but also some of these films, I, I don't know, like, I don't know that if it was as bad as you guys say it was, then uh, clearly they it's not the pandemic that was to be blamed for it. If it was really any good, the people would want to see it yeah. again. Well, this that was the first movie that Warner Brothers put on HBO Max when they decided to do the entire pandemic year of streaming their movies yeah. Wonder Woman 84 was the first one so I think that it was going to get shit on no matter what even if it was actually good just mm-hmm. because seeing a movie like that on a TV screen was never going to like you need some of the big screen feeling mm-hmm. for that type of movie and mm-hmm. watching it on a streaming service like some shitty cheap Netflix movie yeah. <laughs> you're never going to get that feeling well, let's go might, with. Uh, sorry, uh, Wayne. Oh, yeah. sorry. It might have looked worse on a big screen. 
Like, I never saw it on a big screen. I don't know. I just know that it looked bad. Like, the fight in the mall looked ridiculous. It just looked cheap. It looked cheap. It just didn't look right. So I think on a big screen, it might have been even worse. Well, uh, the now I got to see it. <laughs> this is one of these things you guys are when you when you talk down a film. I keep going like it can't be really that shitty, can it? And maybe it is. Uh, the the other film that uh, underperformed was Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Again, I, I, I like I said, guys, I'm really sorry. I normally am on top of all of these, but uh, I just haven't been busy uh, doing doing the QF so so often. But uh, with so regular editing, I've got weekly. But um, this one was a massive bomb, actually. Uh, uh, Shazam, and uh, apparently it just really wasn't. To, to some people, it really wasn't a good film. Uh, Derek, um, I didn't hate it. It was, it was like it was fine. It was, uh, it was what you would expect from a sequel of a okay original movie. Like it wasn't yeah. going to be better. It, they probably didn't give them the same budget. It, was, it just wasn't going to be as good as the first one, which I actually enjoyed. And it was just a paint by numbers superhero movie. It was big showy fight at the end with a bunch of CGI minion creatures and nonstop snarky jokes. It was just a whole lot of like paint by numbers for a movie. Okay. Wayne. Um, yeah, it's, it's not as good as the first one. It's, it's, you know, it's slightly better than wonder woman too. Um, my mind wandered during that. That's I was thinking about stuff from work, and then I was like, "Okay, I got to focus on the movie." And if that starts <laughs> happening, then you know, I mean, yeah. that, that's what happened right out of the box with Iron Man three and um and Green Green Lantern. Like right, I was like, those movies were worse because I was like, I don't give a shit about any of this. Yeah. And then um, but this movie, it kept you know, it would draw me back in, but my mind was wandering about, all right, I got to do this when I get yeah. out of the theater. Groceries. And, you know, and yeah, like things like that. And but it was it moved along. It was okay. And um, it just it's like you said, it was paint by numbers. It's exactly what you expect. It's like a video game where, and then you get to fight the big boss at the end. You know, um, not the worst thing in the world. I'm glad I saw it, but um, whatever. You know, just okay. Yeah, I think what also might have harmed it is because of all the hubbub over how they've pretty much ended the DC current DC universe as a movie universe. So it was like a lot of people were like, so why would I want to see this if it's not going to lead into anything? Since most comic book movies have, Marvel conditioned us to be like, this has to lead into this, that has to lead into this, that is going to take mm-hmm. us to some big final battle. Plus, I think uh, The Rock being a dick when it came to Black Adam not having anything to do with Shazam, which is insane. <laughs> it might have had a lot to do with both movies having their difficulties. Well, that was going to be the next uh, the next topic of discussion. Black Adam, Wayne, you didn't see it. No, I didn't see it either. Uh, and I only recently, I, I think I watched the first half hour, like on just recently for the p- purpose of this show. And I, I hadn't realized that was part of it. Uh, he decided they wanted to be a standalone film. Derek. Yeah, he wanted nothing to do with Shazam. Like. Period. He wanted. He was basically in his <laughs> in his overroided head. He had got it that he was going to basically position Black Adam as the focal point of the DC movie universe, and everything was going to build out from there. And I'm like, dude, it's Black fucking Adam. <laughs> How are that you was- <laughs> well, that, that so that's that's a massive hubris. And like, as big as he is, you can't. It made no. It makes no creative sense at all to not have Shazam because that's your number one protagonist antagonist if you're Black Adam, but also the um, you know in the DC universe for the longest time prior to the John Byrne, um, that's one of the creative writers guys. He also did some of the. Uh, he also did X Men as well. The comics, the actual comics, when they re when they nerfed Superman. And he, they made him less than, you know, they made him way more foul, like just less powerful. And uh, like it, it was before that, it was very few people, Mongol, uh, Solomon Grundy. These were like super powerhouses that might have been able to beat characters like Superman without Kryptonite and all that shit. And then with Shazam, I mean, there's Black Adam and then there's <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Sivana. But there's, there's you know, you, you keep waiting for that that big big fight to happen and it doesn't happen according to every single review i read yeah the thing about black adam was it it was a it was an okay movie 
it, like if it was just an action movie and you didn't think about any of the what it was supposed to be leading into or the repercussions or any of that type of stuff, it was a yeah. fun action movie. It had the Justice Society in it, and I'm a huge Justice Society nerd. Mm-hmm. Doctor Fate looked amazing, and like if they want to make a Doctor Fate movie, they really should because the character was cool. But it's just I don't know what The Rock was thinking. <laughs> like he was smelling himself too much. It's, I don't understand. <laughs> Wait, Wayne. Oh no, I just um, I just was scratching. But um, also, yeah, the, the Doctor Fate. Um, I got the figure for it, even though I haven't seen the movie because the figure looks so cool. The <laughs> uh, Doctor Fate. But um, w- well, the thing is, I I, I found that like. Um, uh, some of these films suffer from like the X-Men, the uh, dark Phoenix uh, suffered from being the end of a cycle where they just kind of released it to get rid of it. You knew that we, I went to see it because there was nothing else to see. That literally was the only English option. And uh, when I did go to the theater that day and I remember thinking, don't even release it, but there was, it would have been, ch- it's cheaper to release it than to actually just keep it in mothballs after having spent that much money filming it. But it was such crap that I, I just still would want to take, I wouldn't want to take the, the, cre- the um, critical hit. I'd be a filmmaker. I'd be like a, I'd be a, a CEO going, I don't even want this out there. Don't release it. It's embarrassing, but it's, it's a, one of those films that's going to suffer on the vine because they go, well, we're going to redo the X-Men. We're going to re the next creative team is going to, start with their own new vision. Like if James Gunn is going to take this over and we know this and Sony's not going to be involved perhaps in the characters, then fuck it. Why are we going to sink any, um, any budget for um, promotion? Why give them extra CGI after the fact post-production help? Fuck it. It's not salvageable. And I hate when they do this to these franchises because they're actually giving them like a, the Lucy football, Charlie Brown thing before it gets started, if they want to do it again. So, um, yeah, Wayne, where does um, this flash movie fit in then if they're going to trash everything? I don't know. And they, they, there's a huge problem with the Ezra Miller because, uh, there he, apparently he's not allowed to do promo because he's such a deviant cocksucker. Um, and, and like, there's blinds all over the place saying like, they've given him a, a, a gag order. I, I don't even know why they're bothering with it. He's apparently a, a real deviant shithead. Derek. Uh, okay. So with Ezra Miller, the, problem with that was they were done with the movie and yeah. they had delayed the flash a couple of times. So they, they, what, they stuck about 200 mil into this movie with him in the lead. And then he starts having <laughs> these episodes where he's just running around kidnapping teenage girls, and all this type of stuff. Yep. Uh, currently though, he's what he pled guilty to one thing. Charges were dropped on most of the other ones, and he supposedly has checked himself into a mental fitness uh, health <laughs> center to, to hopefully try to get him on the right combo of meds so he can actually appear on a red carpet when this movie comes out. This God, time. they'll have him like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> where it fits, that would be funny if they <laughs> wheeled him out on a gurney with the thing on his face. Uh, but where it fits is, this is basically like the reset button for the DC movie universe. Mm-hmm. Cause they're doing the flashpoint paradox story where he goes back in time, saves his mom, completely ruins the world. So this will be the reset. And then the new universe starts with the blue beetle movie, which looks amazing. That trailer and that suit, I have never seen a more comics accurate, expensive looking suit than that blue beetle suit. That suit looks killer. I'll have to check it out. I, I do. This is kind of part of the issue, guys. Now now we can talk a little bit about this. James Gunn had his own controversy from getting basically tweets from his earlier days, you know, came to the forefront. Originally, they canned him from Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is the film we were supposed to cover. and We are covering it. Um, but they, through the cast, all pitched in and said, no, we want him back. This is all bullshit. And it is, really. Like, who hasn't said... Uh, a, j- a joke, you know, making fun of the handicapped or race, racial humor, you know, back when we were kids and when he was when he was younger and not part of this thing. I don't think people should be uh, destroyed for stuff that they should 
if they're not give if they're given a chance to apologize and they're not like Alex Murdoch killing wife and child uh, with a shotgun at close range, then maybe they should be given a chance to at least apologize and let the audience decide if we forgive him or not. Uh, and that's the situation here. He he made all kinds of it was tweets. It wasn't like he was a a fucking deadbeat dad and a child abuser and you know it wasn't like he did anything really bad. And um, he was he managed to get the gig back, but then he signed on with DC Studios to be the co CEO slash co chairman of the 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 studios, and he's supposed to oversee everything as opposed to just being a director or creative consultant. So as a result, no more Ben Affleck. That's going to be great because we won't. But we will. But I wanted to see the memes of him as Batman looking drunk as fuck in that suit. (laughs) He's the meme. He's the chief meme uh, architect of the best memes in the last little while uh, Ben Affleck. I love him. Um, and then Henry Cavill, who uh, had his own little problem with getting underage pussy, um, you know, getting, getting, you know, having to watch out for this, his predilection for, you know, Millie Bobby Brown, supposedly he dated when she was underage, that Oof. kind of shit. Yeah. And also they said he's too young. We want to go with the Superman legacy that's coming out. We want to go with a new thing, which... They, I think that it's an uphill battle for James Gunn, but I think it's a, a good thing for DC and a kind of a loss for Marvel. Uh, Derek? Oh, yeah. I think uh, getting James Gunn as the creative, because he's in a partnership. It's, uh, he's co-running it with the dude. Peter Safran. Yeah, he handles all the money and production while James Gunn does all the creative stuff. Mm-hmm. And he... The stuff with him and his tweets was ridiculous just because it was it was some right wing douchebag guy who was mad because James Gunn said something about Republicans. So he found old tweets. Then it turns out the guy who was hyping up some old tweets that were honestly nonsense like uh, the joke where a uh, kid and a child molester go into the woods. The forest, and only yeah. yeah, that type of joke. Those type of jokes. And it's then it turns out this guy, <laughs> this guy was beating his wife for years, but he's <laughs> pulling out tweets from like the nineties and stuff. So it was just stupid, yep. but him running this is great. And I like his decision that he's going to be the one to do the Superman movie because, yeah. Yeah. because I think James Gunn is the perfect guy to do a Superman movie. He can do big action. He can write stuff with heart. He can do all that type of stuff. So it's mm-hmm. basically all going to boil down to the casting. If they can get the casting right, it should be enough to help just using the gun name with it. Yeah. You don't think it will come off trying to be like too funny or anything? There's a nah, lot of humor in those. He, James Gunn is capable of making movies that have humor but are dark as fuck and or as serious. He can do those things. In Guardians of the Galaxy, I think he just went into it with the intention of it being an action comedy. Yeah. But even, even if you look at um, the Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad had humor, but it was also a deathly serious movie, and it had like pathos and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think he can tone down the humor to make a decent Superman movie. Yeah, I think he can definitely turn it down a little bit and then still get the most out of a dying franchise. And it's hard. I mean, like, how do you fuck up Superman? That really is like taking three bats up to bat and and still swing, taking a swing and a miss. Um, It's it's uh, he's a perfect choice. And the but the 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 fact that they went forward with all this other stuff dc and they fired the pre-exist the existing uh creative people shows you that they didn't have any faith anymore in who they had but they had to stick with them for whatever reasons i would have after some of those things after the first suicide squad you know after um god what was the other uh like after the zack snyder stuff i would have went in a completely different direction already, like immediately and say, fuck it. We got to start from scratch. You rather than going down this road and keep going like wonder woman was the one of the few wonder woman and Shazam. The first Shazam were the two sort of really tentpole things you could kind of build around. And there wasn't enough, I think at that point. Well, I think it was fine too. Uh, Aquaman, the first Aquaman. Yeah. 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 It made over a billion dollars, but I think the issue was, the they started out not wanting to do a movie universe. They were mm-hmm. just going to make movies like they had been doing before with the characters. 
And then mid-stroke, they decide, let's make a cohesive universe. And then it became studio interference. Like that first Suicide Squad was supposedly so dicked around with by the studio that it wasn't even the same movie that David Ayers had finished and handed into him. Mm-hmm. And then they, I think it was, they've had like four different people in charge, supposedly, of the DC movie universe. And then finally, when they did that merger with Discovery, that guy who created Honey Boo Boo, who's running everything, was like, <laughs> let's let's just do a clean slate and start with something new. And I think it just took too long. They should have done this years ago. They need to make um, they need to finally get back and make a Superman that people like a likable guy. Like we did, they, they, these all these Superman since the first two Christopher Reeve movies have been you know dark. The, well, dark yeah dark and just a, a cold nothing character that nobody who cares if he gets the shit beat out of him well yeah you have to have like there has to be some charisma to the character to the actor yeah. playing the character and i don't think they realize that um i mean what they went instead like it, there's a phrase that uh, when john milius was talking about the first conan movie um which is really the only one worth watching ever um, and he said, if, if Arnold didn't exist, we'd have to build him. And, you know, and it's true at the time, he really, he was perfect for the role, yeah. but, um, for somebody like Superman, you can get any number of big buff guys to play the role, but you want someone that's going to actually be likable, charismatic, empathetic. Like you could simply, the audience can, can sort of, uh, relate. That's why Donner did such a great job with that first Superman because of the mm-hmm. Smallville elements. He really did work that angle. And then of course, great casting. Um, you know, so y- you're right, Derek, when you say if, um, James Gunn can get the casting right with Superman legacy, it'll be a massive, massive film, but it's who's going to want to work with for DC. Like who's, who's going to want to be, Jesus, do I really want to put myself into five films? Their biggest problem is they, they weren't patient enough to, to do the, the legwork. Yeah. They needed to move the, you know, they wanted to jump right in to catch up with Marvel where yep. Marvel took, you know, it took years and years to set that up. Oh yeah. And um and they didn't they wanted to do it automatically and it just didn't work. And that Justice League movie, it, it just had so many flaws that it, it just it didn't work out at all. No, it didn't. Um the so let's go right into Ant Man uh Quantum Mania. <laughs> I told <laughs> I told Wayne before we started. I fell asleep twice in the film and I've never done that. That's a two sleep movie. I I've fallen, I have asked for my money back for Apollo 13, um, but I never walked out. And this one, I was just, it was, and I was not tired. I was not sleepy that day. I didn't sleep in. Uh, it wasn't one of those things where I should have stayed up all, I didn't stay up all night. It was just boring. I really fucking loathe that on a, and it even compared to any films, not just movie, comic book movies. I thought it was so awful. What I did was I, what I was awake to see Derek. Uh, I have no problem with movies that are shot 100% in a studio on a green screen set. Right. I have no problem with it. Unless it looks like your movie was shot 100% in a studio on a green screen. Nothing about that movie felt organic at all. Yeah. And then you're going to, like, okay, you're this is all CGI stuff. How in God's name did you all make the flattest most ugly CGI. The colors were all drab and it, and they took out everything that made the first two Ant-Man movies entertaining in any way, which is the fact that Ant-Man doesn't do the big universe per- in peril type stuff. It's focused, small focused, high jinxy type of stuff. Yes. And, and it's like everything in this movie was dumb. Just the decisions mm-hmm. were dumb. Every, Everything was dumb. And the one thing that wasn't stupid and wasn't terrible is probably going to have to be recast because he's smacking around his girlfriend in the back of limo. So oh, Jonathan just, Majors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one good thing about it, you're not even going to have anymore. So it, just a complete and total flop from start to finish. Right. Wayne? Uh, it was just, um, like you said, okay, when, you know, in the Doctor Strange movies, when they show like the, um, you know, like out in the other dimensions, it looked really good. But this just looked like like color forms. It was just um, 
I, you know, I don't know. Just like you said, it's all green screen. Most of it, I didn't care. And it's just like he, I think Ant Man is better in in our world, like you know, doing like you said, like hijinks and stuff like that. And um, the humor, it started off, it was kind of funny, um, and then it just wasn't funny at all anymore. Yeah, and that's that's a movie that I expect the humor in. Yeah. Um, where like the Guardians of the Galaxy mu- movies are just the right amount of humor, and it's not beating you over the head with it. This was just um, it was just boring. It, it was really boring. Yeah, it's it just goes to show you DC doesn't corner the market on being able like Mark, Marvel's just as bad at throwing stuff out. And apparently, they um, the the Ant Man got shafted in terms of post production and of the uh, the G, the G, CGI studio that was tasked to help out the ant-man they were having to do double duty on something else i can't remember might have been guardians of the galaxy 3 and i think they said like we had to rush this film out for release and it looks like it it does look like Mm. and and the color you're at the color choice of the color patterns it did come off like uh, that robin williams cuba gooding jr film what dreams may come like that garish really uh like really i don't know it, it didn't it, you didn't it didn't draw you in it should have it should like the doctor strange and the multiverse of madness should have been better mm. this should have been uh at least watchable and i and i obviously i didn't like it but the other thing was yeah you're talking about jonathan majors why the fuck is kang conqueror of worlds you know or whatever why is he fighting ant-man instead of you know well i kind of yeah. like that because um they brought him in like like i mean i told people i said well you got to go see it just so it's going to be the in- introduction of the big bad, you know, <sighs> um, kind of like what they did with Star Trek Deep Space Nine, where they kind of just mentioned the founders as a throwaway thing. And right. And it came back later. Like the first episode, they mentioned the founders was just like a, a goofy one with Quark selling stuff, you know. And I like that aspect of it. That, But, um, you know, people, nobody probably went to see this and they're not going to get an introduction to Kang the right way. No, and this is the article from Variety. One sec. Uh, it says here, okay, John, uh, Jonathan Majors, uh, as he prepares for May 8th court appearance on domestic violence charges, his PR problems are about to get bigger. Um, sources familiar with the matters tell Variety that multiple alleged abuse victims of Majors have come forward during his following his March arrest and are cooperating with the Manhattan DA's office. Um, it, it, this, the prospect of more women waiting in the wings, this is like a Cosby situation could mark a dramatic turn in the case and comes on the heels of majors, publicists and management firm cutting ties with the actor, uh, in the, uh, earlier the week. And so, and so they're all claiming his innocence, but it says here, okay. Um, the, 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 okay. I'm going to read this real quick. The, uh, hold on, let's see if I got here. Chaudhry, uh, Priya Chaudhry is his, the name of his attorney. It said here, uh, the Creed star, Creed three star was arrested on March 25th in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan on charges of strangulation, strangulation, assault and harassment. Uh, at the time, an NYPD spokesperson said in a statement that a 30 year old woman told police she had been assaulted by majors 33 and that she'd sustained minor injuries to her head and neck and was removed to an area hospital in stable condition. Now I'm going to hold on like further along here. It says here in a text exchange, which had not been independently verified. The woman wrote to majors. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone and stressed that she told police this was not an attack. The woman allegedly wrote, please let me know you're okay. When you get this, they assured me that you won't be charged. And it just reads like a battered woman, you know, like a Stockholm syndrome victim trying to, you know, amend something that was not her fault. And so he's been dropped by, uh, let's see, it says here, he's attached to star in uh, Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, which is slated for May 2nd, 2025. And he's poised for a $20 million payday, including back-to-back, uh, sorry, back-end compensation. He's also signed to star in Avengers Secret Wars, which is supposed to debut in 2026. Um, but the, and he's, he's got a lot of films, like supposedly uh, in the can, like, based on uh, what this is saying. But it uh, it says here, um, sorry guys, this is taking a while. The industry was jolted by news that Majors Publicist, the lead uh, company and Management 360, had dropped their star client well before his first court appearance next month. As of now, WME is still representing him. In 2018, the agency c- created a so-called client advisory committee, which makes 
a recommendation on whether or not to drop a client accused of impropriety. Uh, the, this is, they have previously dropped such clients such as Brett Ratner, Brian Singer, and Army Hammer. <laughs> so you're not in good company when you mention these names. It doesn't look good for him. No, he's doomed. When your PR firm drops you before yeah. you even go to court, and their entire job is to take stuff like this yeah. and try to fix it for you, then they know things we don't know. Yes. And what they know is terrible. So uh, the guy who played the Black Stormtrooper should probably start lifting some weights because he might be getting a call <laughs> to, to be Kang. Because I don't see Jonathan Majors making it into the rest of these movies. No, that's kind of, and, and like, and I, I mentioned the Ezra Miller stuff like that, that one is, you know, like he, he, he being the heavy and not the lead is, is less, it's lesser, but it's still a big deal. Um, but then with the, the flash of the Ezra Miller stuff, the allegations and what have you, it's, um, it's not good. It's not a good look. So, um, anyway, we'll see how that goes. Let's go into guardians of the galaxy three, unless you guys have more to say about <laughs> Jonathan Majors. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, what a mess. Yeah, it is a mess. mess. So Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I think we all, this is why we I wanted to bring all that other stuff in, because whenever we agree that a film is good, we don't really have as much to say. It's much more fun to trash shit. I enjoyed <laughs> it. I, I gave it, I uh, without uh, sc- scoring the previous films, I would say I gave it a, like a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, Derek? Yeah, I'd give it an 8 too. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Wayne? I really loved it. My sister saw it before me, which is rare, and she's like, "Oh, it's kind of, it's silly," and I was like going into it saying, "Oh no, it's going to be silly," and um, I, I loved it. I, I didn't think I didn't really have any problem with it. It had just the right amount of humor, um, not beating you over the head with it. Um, great acting, stuff that you really cared about. You cared about everything that happened in it. Um, it didn't leave in a, a happy you know, tied up Hollywood kind of ending. It was kind of sad, actually. Yeah. Um, the end of it. Um, and it was refreshing. Uh, the only thing I hated was like, don't wait till the end of the movie, you know, to see the last, the last screen thing. Cause who cares? That was nothing. It was awful. I remember the, 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 the uh, mid credit sequence, um, it was to indicate that this is going to be the future Guardians of the Galaxy going yeah. forward. That one is fine. But the last one, honestly, guys, just as soon as you see the mid one, if you by the time you get just this, leave. I'm sure you've already seen it. Just just leave. Yeah, you don't need to see it. Uh, I hate when they do that. Don't make us sit around for nothing. Yeah. Give us at least something, even if it was. And I guess I was looking at the newspaper that was, you know, clearly visual, yeah. like the, the the grandfather reading it. And I'm going like, maybe there's something in the newspaper. Yeah. And that's what you're supposed to look at. And there's nothing. It says something about Star Lord is going to come back. Yeah, something about Kevin Bacon. See, I didn't see the holiday special, but you're supposed to. Yeah, yeah, and because in the end credits, like I saw a picture of Kevin Bacon go by, and I was like, "What the hell is Kevin Bacon? You know, what's that all about?" Because I didn't know that there was a holiday holiday special. A new in joke. Well, after the Bernie Madoff thing, I'm sure Kevin needs the money, and uh, yeah, um, because he got he like famously like lost all of his money, him and his wife, but uh, due to the Bernie Madoff thing. Um, so he needs the gigs and so does she. But um, uh, I, in the holiday special, it's, it's, uh, it's indicated, it's, a, it's, it's told at the end, I didn't realize this, that Mantis and Quill are half siblings, which I what? thought, yeah, did you, that's, yeah, that's, that's, didn't you hear it in, in the Guardians of the Galaxy? He said, you're my sister. Yeah. And I thought he thro- just meant, I thought it just meant because they're like um, just family. No, she apparently she goes, oh, uh, your father is my father. Ego fathered her as well. I, I, I just thought it meant like family. Yeah, me too. Like uh, to me, it was yeah. a throwaway. And, uh, and I go, I'll have to go sis- watch it. Sister. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, um, what, what, were there any things you didn't like about it, Derek? Uh, yeah, you guys thought it was like the Fast and the Furious family. Where yeah. Vin Diesel, there's yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Family. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. There, I can run down a list of things I didn't like, even though I <laughs> enjoyed the movie. Yeah, uh, most of most of it is nitpicky. Like the biggest thing that I didn't like was, like they could have kept Gamora dead. I didn't need yeah uh, time yeah. displaced, way too angry in every scene. Gamora, <laughs> like she was one note through the whole movie. Yeah, so that I could have done without. As an Adam Warlock fan, the fact that they decided to make him just a Vabbit himbo was a bit disappointing, but yeah, 
Like I've gotten so used to that with Marvel stuff where they take a character that I might like and treat them as just like some throwaway goofy. That's a hard character to, to explain though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I knew that he was going to not be anything of note when in the previous Guardians of the Galaxy that they introduced her and then made it just that she was some haughty aristocrat from some gold planet that the yeah. high evolution created. So, yeah. so it was like, I knew there wasn't going to be any of the in-depth stuff of what Adam Warlock was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, I did like the high evolutionary uh, the guy who played him was good. He's in. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's in the Peacemaker. He was in the Peacemaker show. Spoilers: He got killed, but <laughs> he was good in that too. Uh, so I liked him, and I liked that they didn't kill him because I hate I hate when movies have a good villain and then they kill them in the one movie they're in. So I liked that it was open ended that he could still uh, come back later, mm-hmm. but I don't need to ever see Star Lord again. And the concept of like. Star Lord on Earth is just a costume superhero. Right, is not appealing to me in the least. I I don't hate Chris Pratt like most of the internet tells me I should, but <laughs> I also don't need to see him without Rocket and Groot and the rest of the crew hanging out with him either. So, like so, well, yeah. I think well, th- there's scuttlebutt that he's going to join James Gunn over at DC and be a ca- new character over there, which you know fine but if you're so identified as star lord you might that might actually be worse for you than if you just got an unknown or someone who has nothing no affiliation whatsoever um but like because i looked at the dc studios lineup for the um what they're going to do and it says here okay let me see if i got it right um uh, upcoming, The Flash, Blue Beetle, Aquaman, and the Lost Kingdom, which <laughs> apparently they've re- completely reshot with uh, all the um, Amber Heard stuff cut out, which I don't blame them uh, because <laughs> you know that the, you know that there would be Barely test should. audiences like giving deliberately saying, "I hated when I saw that bitch on screen." Mm. Uh, Joker, Folia de, which is Todd Phillips doing a second one, and I presume they're going to get Joaquin Phoenix to, to to reprise himself. Superman Legacy and the Batman Part Two. Uh, these are all going to be, uh, I guess, tentpole films over the next. Uh, Blue Beetle comes out this August, and The Flash is June sixteenth. Are you guys going to see either? I mean, Blue Beetle, uh, Derek. I'm sure you you you're raving about it, so you'll see it. Oh yeah, I'm going to yes. see both. Of them. <laughs> yeah, I'll see both. I try to I see all Sh- the stuff. Yeah, I saw, I saw Shazam 2 first night. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're down. <laughs> well, fair enough. I, I think uh, with, with Guardians of the Galaxy 3, well, I did enjoy it. There were a couple things that didn't quite. Uh, first of all, it's a Disney film, but I still heard the F, full, uh, the F word. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was only one time. I think whatever the rating is, there were some deaths in it. I think I've mentioned this before. I must sound like such a prude when, I, when we do these things. There were some deaths, alien deaths, that I thought, um, there's no way I would allow my fucking 12-year-old to see this. It said, like, you know, 12-year-old plus at adult supervision. To, I'd never allow them to watch it. Just like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark when those Nazis start melting. Mm-hmm. I, and I was like, I don't know, six when I saw it. Like, I shouldn't have been able to see this. Well, um, no, 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 one yeah, was, um, I mean, you know, he kept telling, he kept telling Drax, I no, nobody's getting killed. We're not going to kill anybody. Then they go in and stop blowing everybody away. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like, is it, is it, uh, were they, were they killing these people or were they just like knocking and stunning them with these, these blasters? It Meanwhile, <laughs> well, it looked pretty dead to me. And yeah. also some of them were being cut in half by Gamora. So, yeah. um, I have a feeling, yeah, they're all dead and you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing was, uh, tell me if you guys think I'm nuts. Does um, Zoe Saldana look hotter as Gamora than as herself? <laughs> no, she, she was hot. She was hot as Gamora. Uh, I like her. I like her more as Gamora. Maybe it's a whole green Orion slave girl yeah. thing from Star Trek hitting me over the head. But uh, I, I thought she looked way sexier. And and maybe it's the attire. Or maybe it's maybe it's like when you see women playing musical instruments, they automatically become like from they go from a six to a seven. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's it. Did run through my mind. It's like, well, she's an, an alien chick. It's like, yeah, I'd do a, a green chick. Why not? <laughs> Why <know>? not? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah. the, the other thing is, of course, um, 
Batista, like as, as Drax, like Drax in the comic was a goofball. So that makes perfect sense. Like there's an alignment from the comics to the actual big screen rocket raccoon being the, the focus of this. Cause my wife asked me, should I have known all of this, you know, not having seen the first and second, I go, no, 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 they're it's fine. They, they didn't focus mm-hmm. on his origin. That's what this is going to be. So as long I think you're good, as long as you saw one of them anyway, and she only went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and she enjoyed it, but this one she enjoyed more. Yeah, oh, I, yeah really, rocket, I really loved it. Yeah. The rocket stuff was probably my favorite part of it, his flashback. And I think they invoked more emotion out of me with a bunch of CGI, Animation. cyborg, <laughs> yeah. critters yeah. than in all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies combined. I mean, Tony yeah. Stark was murdered and I was like, eh, but yeah. shot that damn rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, why you gotta shoot floor? Yeah. <laughs> and see <laughs> that's that's what, think, anybody? <laughs> that's what I think my sister might have thought was silly, but that's the thing I liked about it. Like exactly what you're saying. Because you actually yeah, cared about these mutant animals, you know, or these yeah. bio things, you know. Look, there's that first five not five, maybe six for the the, the ten minutes into the film up when you get the story of, uh, you know, Ellie and Carl and people are like fucking choking, like, in, you know, it's an animation, mm-hmm. it's a Pixar movie and you shouldn't be, but, uh, you're right. That was James Gunn's strength to be able to balance the pathos. Mm-hmm. almost like, a, it's like family ties. They could do comedy, they could do drama, yeah. but you just didn't know when was going to, which one was going to hit. And maybe that's also a strength of the film. So if he brings that to, uh, DC, that's a massive plus, and I'm not looking forward to. Hold on, let me just check about uh, Phase Six. Um, phase Six Marvel. Okay, let me get this because I got I got to get this right. Um, hold on, Deadpool Three, November eighth next year. Uh, but we're gonna have uh, not Mar- not DC or Marvel related. Dune Two is coming out this November, which I know Carrie will definitely want to be down for the review of that. It looks excellent to yeah, me. me too. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it in the film because I only saw the first one in uh, at home, like with probably just about everybody else. And I really enjoyed it. Not having been a, like a, a, a follower of the um, of the never not having read the books, I really enjoyed the first one. And apparently, they got most of the they hit most of the notes. Dune, the first Dune. Oh yeah, yeah I was I'm really psyched. happy with it. I'm psyched for Dune, especially the fact that I'm going to be able to see it in a movie theater instead of watching it at home now. Since yeah. See, I want. I, I saw yeah. it in the theater twice, and it was pretty much an empty theater. I had a private theater because that was still <laughs> when COVID was going on. I rolled the dice. F seven, um, yeah, F seven. I got the, yeah, and I saw it. I saw it in the theater twice. And uh, the other day, as I saw it on old people time, it was like um, Tuesday afternoon. That's uh, well. That's yeah. the, Is it cheaper as a matinee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. perfect. Well, and you said they reupholstered, uh, or they they brought in a yeah. new chair for you. So F seven yeah, is a shiny new F seven. Yeah, the guys that just um, just replaced it. I walked in and they had like the some of the seats were lined up, the old ones. And I sat down. I was like, "Oh, what? my seats are already done." Because a week before, I had oh actually that's another movie it was sixty five I had seen, and um and the seat was beat. And I'm like, "Man, I got to fix my seat," you know. And then yeah. it was fixed the next week after. Perfect. They were just working through them all. Um, yeah. So so the next one is going to be Deadpool three. I never saw the second one. I heard it was all right, but for some reason I kind of find Ryan Reynolds a little annoying and uh, I enjoyed the first one, but I couldn't get my wife to see the first one or the second one. So we had to watch some other piece of shit. Uh, Fantastic four is going to be February 14th, 2025. I, they, I have, I'm indifferent. I, I hope it's going to be good, but I have no, did they no cast do any casting for it yet? I'm not that's sure. What was, that's what I was wondering. Like February 2025 is going to be here before you know it. And there's been no yeah. casting at all. I think the last um, casting was, was was the rumor that uh, what the hell's her name? The one who's married to Ashton Kutcher was going to be a uh, gender swap Ben Grimm. What? Uh, Mila you, Kunis. You, oh God, you've got to be kidding! <laughs> oh come on, that's got to be a joke. That, yeah, that I was the so. rumor going around for a while. <laughs> well, it it has a here. It's it's all to be announced according to them. So not any, even John Krasin- of- John Krasinski may not even be uh, Reed Richards by that point. If they if they mess with any of the casting of the characters and, and don't keep them like the comic, it's doomed already. I think so too. That one's going to be very key. They know I what happened it. the last time. 
Yeah. I've hated last, all last the rumors. every time. <laughs> I've hated all the rumors about casting for the Fantastic Four. I mean, the the Mila Kunis one was dumb enough that I didn't think that it had a <laughs> chance of being real. But then it was followed up with um, Adam Driver as Reed Richards. And I'm like, come on. It's too young. Why? And, and uh, what's her name? The one who plays Harley Quinn. Oh, it's Margot, Margot Robbie. And I'm like, what's with the incestuous need to have all these inner swapping studios? Yeah. <laughs> like, she is a comic book character already. Find yeah. another blonde. There's a billion blondes out there. Just grab one. Or there's you get a brunette and color her blonde for the film. Who yeah. gives a shit? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's not that difficult. I mean, that's not a CGI thing you have to do. Uh, the next one, Avengers: The Kang Dynasty, May of that year, and Se- Avengers: Secret Wars. And again, how do you set up Secret Wars? And what are you going to do? Like, you're going to create a planet from scratch using bits of, you know, uh, you know, Midtown Manhattan and you know Mars Planet, whatever. The, I mean, the original S- Secret Wars was that the comic itself was fantastic. It was a great series, but I think Mike Zek drew it. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I just don't know how you do that with this incarnation of the the lineup, the Marvel lineup. I think I think it's Secret Wars, not Alien Invasion, or. It says Avengers Secret Wars right Secret after Wars? the Kang Dynasty. Are they going to have like the Beyonder, like that whole thing? I don't know. That that means they're hope they're, we don't know what they're going to have lined up before then. So like these are only what they've announced, and they're they're going to be tentative. Derek, see, I think I was kind of too old for Secret Wars because I thought it was kind of silly and I didn't like the writing. Uh, I was thirteen and I was all in. <laughs> so, oh, really? I, I might have been like eighteen. And I thought, I remember there was like the one line I laughed at the most was um, it was like somebody was given um, Cyclops a hard time from one of the other teams. And then yeah. uh, Wolverine said, um, well, Cyclops is a jerk, but he's our jerk. Yeah. And I was like, oh, come on. You know, yeah. and that, that's uh, the kind of thing that I think I was too old for it. Maybe. Well, what they're doing, they're doing Secret Invasion as a TV show. It comes out sometime this year on Disney Plus. And I'm wondering if they're going to use that as a thing to lead into Secret War, or if they're going to, even, or if they're even going to do Secret Wars as the original, because they did. There was a second Secret Wars series oh. that happened recently. So if they're it even going to use everything. yeah, they're going to use the one with the Beyonder or not? It, who knows? They might do an Age of Ultron and just use Secret Wars as a title, and it won't actually be adapted from the original series. Right. Well, it's up in the air, and either way, I, I the, the Fantastic One, Fantastic Four one fascinates me because they've literally had taken so many shots at it and failed every single fucking time. I mean, some of the casting before wouldn't have been too bad. Like Michael Chiklis is a good actor, but once you la- lather on all this fucking makeup, and you, you, like maybe just CGI him the way they did um, uh, Thanos. You know, with the uh, Josh Brolin, uh, that that might work. Like it, you have to, but it's got to be done the right way and well, like uh, the with the right creative team. Yes, or the Hulk, absolutely. And apparently, they're bringing back Liv Tyler, for example, for uh, to play Betty Banner, um, mm-hmm. for or Betty uh, Betty Ross rather for a future. Like for for some, for, apparently she's going to come back, but they're not bringing back Edward Norton as the best <laughs> Bruce Banner. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> So, um, anything you guys want to discuss before we wrap this one up? Did you see the movie 65? Did you guys? No. 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 It's I actually, it. I was surprised. What'd you think? I, it was okay. Yeah. I didn't need that kid. I could have lived without the kid. I hate, I hate um, kids in movies. <laughs> I hate kids in movies too, but the reason I like this one is because it couldn't talk. And um, it was just kind of yeah. there. Um, Adam Driver, he barely talked or whatever. Um, I thought it was a more violent version of a Jurassic Park, which one of the reasons I hate Jurassic Park is because I hate the kids in the movies. Um, yeah, to know it all always, the kids. Always stick in at least two of them, and it's terrible. And Steven, Steven Spielberg, ever since E.T., has to have a know-it-all little wise-ass kid in every movie. Only one I liked was Short Round. That was it. Um, but all his movies are just, I don't know. And people think that, that oh he knows so he makes movies of like how it was to be a kid i'm like i don't know that's not my um that's not how my childhood was i wasn't a know-it-all little punk you know <laughs> little little puke you know in the way all the time and you know 
but you weren't, uh, no, you weren't was, Wesley Crusher. No, yeah, no, exactly. But uh, the thing I liked about it is I thought that you know they showed some of the dinosaurs just look like out and out lizards, which you don't see like in the Jurassic Park movies. Mm-hmm. That's what I liked about it. And plus, it was violent. There was a lot of guns, and you know, it was it was kind of what what I would have rather had the first Jurassic Park to be like them trying to get to the main base overnight with being attacked all night without mm-hmm. kids. You know, that's yeah. what it should have been. I think uh, they screwed up revealing that he was in the past with dinosaurs right. and stuff in the trailer as early as they did. Mm-hmm. Cause like the first trailer for the first minute, I was like, this looks super cool. And it's like, I was like, that's a T-Rex. <laughs> so he's in the past. Okay. Good. Yeah, not nearly as in. intriguing as I thought it was going to be. They should have not told you that it was in the past until like the end of the movie, like done like a play of the apes thing. Yeah, do like Jaws. You didn't see that damn mechanical shark for a good two yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah, and you couldn't apparently. <laughs> they couldn't get it to work properly. It turned out to be a, like it wasn't Spielberg's genius. It was literally like, thank God it didn't work. That's a happy accident. Um, did you guys see the um, Last of Us, the uh, TV series? Yeah. No. Uh, Derek, I heard it was excellent. I heard there was, I heard nothing but good things about it. Is it worth the watch? Because uh, I, uh, I did play one of the games on my PSP, but I, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I really cared about it. Uh, so should I give it a give it a shot? Uh, yeah, it's really good. This is this is my caveat that I tell people because it's like it's two types of people who watch these type of shows. You're either yeah. in it to see lots of zombies, or you're in it for the the real story is the people, blah, 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 type thing. Right. And in the case of The Last of Us, they did really well with the people stuff. Like some of the episodes that are like just standalone that barely feature a zombie here or there, yep. just have like dickhead humans messing with other humans are amazing. You're not getting a lot of zombies. I don't know if it was the budget or what. It costs a lot to put fungus on people's heads or something, but <laughs> you don't get a whole lot of them. When you do get them, it's awesome, but you're not getting a lot. So if you're only in it to see zombies, yeah. But they well, do a lot of the human stuff a billion times better than like The Walking Dead, which always claim are stories about people. Like, yeah, well, you suck at it. Well, <laughs> well, The I'm Walking doing. Dead, The Walking Dead, I <laughs> tapped out of after the first season. I didn't think I had it in me to watch more because I, I, I just kind of got. Uh, it, it, yeah, and I didn't follow the comics, so it didn't matter to me, but I just wasn't drawn in any further because I'm not a zombie nut. Like, I don't care about zombie films. Never have. Same here. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, 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 but yeah, go ahead. Really good. It's, it's really, really good. Okay. Oh. Uh, the only one, the only one I'll recommend is one I did before we started uh, talking, uh, recording rather the glory. It's a Korean drama on Netflix guys. It's got two seasons. It's two seasons long and it's just a one long revenge fantasy and it's, but come, come to life. And uh, I've only seen the first season. Derek said he's only seen the first season as well. And it's wonderful. It really is fantastic. But I recommend you listen to it in the original language, even though Stern would probably tell you it's too much ching chong, ching chong. Yeah. Wrong co- not even the right country, but either and, way. And nobody will criticize it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And but it's brilliant. It's actually seamless television. And uh, it's one of those things where y- you almost expect it's going to be made into a remake for some some English some English broadcast is going to try to redo it and they'll fuck it up without question. Yeah. I'm shocked. They didn't try already. And I know exactly where they'll screw up. They won't be able to do the cruelty that the kids were doing when they were high school students. Cause they were yes. some cruel bastards. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that sounds like something I like. Well, the key, yeah, the key to any good revenge story is you have to make it the, the revenge commensurate to the actual, crime that was committed like if it wasn't severe enough you go i don't buy this this is not not it not it isn't realistically i don't know that anybody would go to the lengths because somebody took their fucking lunch money uh and that was it you know what i mean it has to be quite severe and they didn't shy away from it it was the first episode is the one that if you if it turns you off that you, you have to it's like the wire you got to keep go keep a little going a little further the wire was slow moving you, you the first episode of the wire wasn't going to get you in uh but once you start getting past the uh the the cruelty of the first episode then you're you're all in yeah it so. sounds good yeah, it, it is it's a really good show yeah um so one i had there were two other things i wanted to bring up um yeah the, please i don't know if you guys follow the star trek like the new star trek 
shows? Have you seen Picard or um, Strange New Worlds? No. no. I, I love Strange New Worlds. That's my current yeah, favorite too. of the new Trek. And yep. I was pleasantly surprised by how good the last season of Picard was because it was yeah, a struggle too. bus those first couple of seasons. They only, didn't know I, I only saw... There was one big mistake, though, was bringing back the Enterprise D. That was corny. Um, it's not oh, yeah. the Yamato. You know, it's... um. Um, the other thing too is they blew it because they brought it back, but they didn't have the bridge set up like in how it was set up in Star Trek Generations. There were like two two stations over on the sides, and uh, that was like the bridge from the TV show. So the, usually Star Trek's really good with continuity stuff, but they really blew it on that. I don't know if anybody else noticed it. Uh, so this is the, them doing Christopher the stories of Christopher Pike in the first, you know, the 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 original pilot episode of star yeah, trek basically that's, that's strange strange new worlds yeah but yep. then there's i'm talking about the bridge from picard the bridge from strange new worlds is like a blown out version of the original bridge but it's fine that mm -hmm. doesn't bother me but strange new worlds i have no complaint about there was only one episode i wasn't too big on that was like kind of like what um a holodeck kind of gimmick one oh, they I have dressed a up like old knights and, and i've then, got a question oh. i'm sorry wayne i yep. didn't mean to cut you off please sorry did you guys either of you guys see the sandman Oh, the TV show? Yeah. Yeah, I I liked it. I thought that they kind of veered a little bit too much into whatever the the girl was who was the key to everything. That got a little bit kind of draggy, except mm -hmm. the serial killer convention, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> Is it the but, Neil Gaiman Sandman? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know about they, it. They did. It was, it's completely under the radar and I saw uh, bits of it and it, I liked what I saw so far. I'm going to try to binge it one they, these days. The only way I can watch these things is if I binge them, unfortunately, because I don't have it in me to go set, you know, viewing times. I'm going to like, okay, today it's raining. Fuck it. I, there's a season of TV in my future. Which one is it? And, uh, at the, the end of it, you kind of get woozy, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, it's just the way, cause we record so often during the week, normally when we have a regular schedule and then editing, I don't do editing at work. It's almost impossible with my fucking yappy coworkers, unless I be a really rude asshole and go in my Bluetooth and sell, tell them, I'm doing some work here guys. But, um, uh, it looks excellent and I don't know if it's going to survive past the first season, but, uh, for apparently they, 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 they're greenlit a second. Yeah, they uh, already gave it the green light for a second yeah. season. Yeah. So, but yeah, I like the casting was great too. They did really well with the casting of everybody. And one other movie I wanted to bring up um, did, did you see that Everything at Once or Everything Everywhere at Once? No, and I like that, that Jamie Lee Curtis got in uh, an Oscar. Uh, it's the first uh, hermaphrodite to win an Oscar. <laughs> you don't want to talk about inclusion. Yeah. Apparently, it's it's good. I've never seen it, but uh, but uh, you know, I've, I've never had. It. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was my favorite movie of last year. Yeah, and I thought it deserved every Oscar that it won. Yeah, I, I, there was a, some things that are a little bit too quirky for me in it. Um, but overall, it's really good. Um, it, it, I think I, it's really strange that this movie won awards because I, I wouldn't think that most people would be able to understand it. Yeah, it got real deep into the nerdy stuff. So yeah. I was shocked that it got the... But there's like one of my, fav my favorite lines in all movies when she first sees her daughter dressed up and all uh, get up. She's like, you look stupid. <laughs> it was like the funniest thing. I, I was like laughing for 10 minutes over that. Just such, such a throwaway thing. But she's like, you look stupid. And it's like, that's what a mother would say if they saw their kid dressed up like that, you know. But um, I, I really liked it. This year, so we got The Flash and we got Blue Beetles and then the Aquaman film all this year. And then there's two more Marvel films, not counting all the TV shows that they have set up. Um, I, uh, I don't know what the next theme we're going to review for, but, uh, Blue Beetle, if, uh, I'll be in Vietnam for a couple of weeks, but I definitely want to check that one out. I think it looks from what I've read so far, it looks like they're doing a good job on it. Is it like golden age Blue Beetle or our time? It's the current one, uh, Jaime, whatever his name oh, is. Okay. The Latin kid who's got the okay. scarab. Is it the uh, the fella, the little kid from uh, Cobra Kai? Yeah. Uh, yep. I don't know how I don't know how you pronounce his name. <laughs> like, there's a 
Jolo. <laughs> yeah, Jolo Mariduena. Oh, or Mariduena, yeah, yeah. whatever his name is. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, whatever from <laughs> Cobra Kai kid, he'll probably be, uh, he'll probably be like, like that for the rest of his life. Just like Clancy Brown would be, you're the fucking Highlander guy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're the guard in Shawshank. Yeah. That's my not name, but yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, it looks like a all Latino or mostly Latino cast and, uh, either way it's, uh, it's something you could definitely that's the that's the kind of thing like i want them to make a dead man or specter uh series or like like one of those mystic i i've always had that fascination with the the underworld or the you know the nether like the way they did to doctor strange let's go down that road you can you guys can do the there's so much real estate in those realms where you could there's no end to the storylines you can make and you got shitloads of characters so uh if they start going um, you said uh, earlier, uh, Wayne, Dr. Fate. Yeah. Like Dr. Fate's a perfect character for yeah. a number of things. And then you could add Zatanna if you want, you could add, yeah. uh, I don't know, um, who else? The stranger, you could add all kinds of, uh, characters from DC that no one might know about, but they're, that's, that's actually a perfect franchise. You don't have any expectations. What are the two Marvel well, movies? I know is the Captain Marvel Team girls, or whatever. the Marvels. Yeah, no, I have no interest in that. I'm probably going to go see mm-hmm. it just to see how bad it is. It actually looks entertaining. It looks more entertaining than that Captain America uh, Marvel movie did from the trailer. Like the trailer looks entertaining, right? Uh, she doesn't. If seem they like tone, they, hopefully they tone her down. Did. Yeah, it looks like they might try to tone her down. At least that's how the trailer was cut. You know, Brie Larson is a charismatic actress. I don't know why they made her like a. Like she was on downers or something. In that they should have, if they wrote her like, if they wrote it like it is in the comics, I don't know where the screw up was because she's a likable character in the comics, but she was hateable in those movie in that movie. Well, Carol, Carol, yeah, the character Carol Danvers is fully fleshed out, and she's a killer, and she's deadly with her hands, and yeah. she's got this relationship like with Logan, and you know, like she's definitely um, like she's secret ops kind of person, and yet. Here she just seems like a yeah, pissed off millennial. Uh, yeah. you know, like it really that's that's what they very did petty. wrong with that. Very, yeah, very... just yeah. Uh, and mind you, the promo, like the unfortunately, the Captain Marvel, like, uh, uh, press junkets did not make it make her any more likable, and she clearly was unhappy doing any of it. Uh, Brie Larson, so that might have been part of it, but either way, um, <laughs> what are your expectations, Derek, for this Marvel's? Um, I think it has to be better than that first yeah. movie. That first movie was like a Marvel TV show for ABC, not even a Disney Plus TV show. Yeah. Big <laughs> uh, time. So, and I actually liked Ms. Marvel. I think the girl they hired to play that part on the TV show is a good actress. Mm-hmm. And so she might inject a little bit of energy into it. Mm-hmm. I love Monica Rambeau as a character. I haven't yeah. had an opinion on her in the MCU just because it's been basically a nothing character mm-hmm. in her appearances. So hopefully yeah. they like eve her up a little bit, but I kind of hope that better. she, I hope she takes the main focus of the movie. And if they keep her like she is in the comic, it will be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They should yeah. say up that she doesn't like Carol Danvers. Cause that's the one thing right. I like about them in the comics right. is Monica lets it be known how much she, doesn't like Carol. So, <laughs> yep. Well, you could you could build off of that, man, and and look at you know it it the conflict. It's like wrestling. Conflict sells it sells puts asses in yeah. seats. So if that's um, necessary, we want F seven filled at all times, and F eight <laughs> and F nine and all of them. Yeah. Make um I don't make her be Captain Marvel and send her off um the the other one off to be binary. Send her out deep to deep space. I'd love for that to happen. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Just get rid of her. Yeah. Listen, I'm taking care of some uh, problems on the other side of the universe, aka never, my contract wasn't renewed. Again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gal- Galactus ate me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what's what's the other Marvel movie? There was one more. Yeah, the Marvels. Then, uh, yeah, Marvels, and then that's November 10th, and then Captain America: New World Order in the spring of next year, which could be good. I have no idea so far what's it's still they're filming it now. It's not there's and something called the Thunderbolts. 
<laughs> as his summer oh. movie. Thunderbolts is all is Suicide Squad of Marvel, basically. It, like all the bad guys become good yeah, guys, kind of. The Dirty it's, Dozen. Uh, yeah, it's like going to be Julia Louis Dreyfus, that character she plays, uh, yeah. Val, whatever her name is, the Red mm-hmm. Guardian, and Black Widow's like, sister, Winter Soldier. Like is there any Baron Zemo? Or? I don't think they've got. Yeah, I think he is in it. He's going to be part of the team. The yeah. Baron Zemo is going to be in it, and um, the ghost from the Ant Man movie. Uh, the chick who is the fan. oh yeah Ava yeah. Star. Uh, let's see, John John Kamen, I guess his name is, and uh, Hannah. yeah, Hannah John Kamen. So, Hannah John Hank Kamen. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my mistake. So what's the Captain America New World Order? Is that Falcon Captain America or? I believe so. Yeah, uh, Anthony Mackey. He's going to be Sam Wilson. Yeah, and then then of yeah. course it says here um, they've got Danny Ramirez and Carl Lumley reprise their respective roles of Joaquin Torres slash Falcon and Isaiah Bradley from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, alongside Tim Blake Nelson as Samuel Stearns, aka the Leader, and Liv Tyler. This is where I read it, and Betty Ross from The Incredible Hulk, two thousand eight. Harrison Ford plays Thaddeus. Athetus or whatever Thunderbolt Ross replacing the late William Hurt from previous MCU films. I don't know if that's an upgrade or not, but Harrison Ford's certainly a bigger name than William Hurt was. God rest his God rest his soul. Um, so that gonna could be, work. Is it going to become Red Hulk? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, you never know. Like, that sounds like they're making a Hulk movie though. The leaders, the yeah. villain, Betty and Thunderbolt in it. You'd think so, and then Harrison Ford's going to be in that Thunderbolts as well. So he's got to survive. Right. I hope he hope he's got his doctor's. Uh, I hope he's got his doctor's consent for all this shit and doesn't go flying on. Uh, doesn't pilot any planes. Oh. Or, yeah. Have you guys <laughs> heard the stuff about New Indiana Jones? Yeah, like being a last. The... Another, they, I think Spielberg has it up his ass that the fourth one was such a which is such a bomb, yeah. critically a bomb anyway. Um, that he wants to do do well. Like probably they want to send it off the right way. But have you heard, well, I, I heard a really bad rumor that um, it's, you know, because it has some kind of thing with a time disc that, you know, um, what's the, you know, that professor guy, the daughter is, is going to be a sidekick in this one. Well, there's some kind of thing that happens that, that people are saying, this is the rumor at Disney, that um, that the daughter is going to do some kind of weird time thing and they're going to CGI her into like all the the uh, old you know, raise the lost ark on like CGI her into like scenes from all those movies in the timeline that she's going to take over as Indiana Jones, and he would not have existed if this that, is true. Uh, if that's true, that's maybe the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'll, I'll, I'll I'd be like ripping F seven would be destroyed <laughs> if that happens. If that happens or whatever, it's like fuck Disney, or whatever. That, that's it. So I don't even want to see if this if this is the truth. I don't want to see this movie. Uh, movie. The guy that um, it was on YouTube. The guy that sprung this rumor was the one that he sprung the rumor about the horses in the last Star Wars movie. You know how they rode horses on the Star Destroyer? Yeah. Like he he blew that um, that rumor that you know that was true, and uh, he was the one that sprung that rumor. So that's the thing that I guess they showed this to test audiences for. Um, and people were furious, so hopefully they did damage control. <laughs> that they CGI because of this time thing, she gets CGI'd into like the whole history of him of um, Indiana Jones, and um, and you know then she's the new hero to go on, and be a woman hero, of course, you know. Who's the asshole gets fired for this fucking like just if because, this because that because if if you you have to first of all you have to spend the money on the CGI. Second yeah. of all, you got to waste that time testing an obviously stupid idea. Yeah, but they're, they're so just convoluted. stupid enough to do it. Yeah, they're just Derek, stupid enough to do it. Um, it just seems really convoluted. It's like, and the only thing I really care about with this new Indiana Jones is this short round is in it. The guy's <laughs> won an Oscar. Can he yeah, yeah. Movie? Like, let him be the sidekick. I don't need to yeah. see the daughter of a. I don't think he's, he's he's not in it though, right? That now, nah, see, that's dumb. That's dumber than them. Time displacing Indiana Jones, to, some woman nobody knows. <laughs> it's supposed to be the daughter. I think the sidekick is the daughter of you know that professor that he worked with. Yeah, the guy that used to send him out to get shit. Like I guess it's that girl, that guy's daughter, and she's the sidekick. Yeah, yeah it's the uh, actor who is the original Modoc. Yeah, the Marvel U. 
Uh, yeah, we were talking earlier about how DC could do lesser known characters like the magical stuff. And when James Gunn announced the first slate of movies, and it's like Superman Legacy, they're going to do a Brave and the Bold, which is Batman and his son Damien. Uh, they're doing a Supergirl movie based off of a recent story that Tom King wrote that like got all this critical acclaim. And they're making Swamp Thing, a Swamp yep. Thing movie, yep. which is cool because that basically leads them into the magic stuff. Like from Swamp Thing, they can jump to pretty much every corner of the DC magic universe. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a Creature Commandos TV show, which I think is the most out of the box <laughs> thing to do at this point. It, I think it's even going to be a cartoon at that. It's not even going to be live action. Yeah. So it seems like they're trying to like think outside the box a little bit with the stuff that they're doing now. It's yeah, yeah, it's possible that's going to be the situation. They like I, uh, the Swamp Thing one is, is is a good idea in some respects, but CGI wise it's always going to be like a a bit of a a quandary. Like are they going to make it look dark enough, deep enough? Like are they going to add more characters to make that um uh, large enough universe? to sustain itself for a while uh wayne um with that brave and bold thing with um damien are they going to have talia th as the mother and how are they going to that's a long story to uh that's what they claim they're going to stick to him being talia's kid with rachel ghoul as his grandfather and are they going to uh, are they going to i mean they're going to use like the christian bale thing with that or is it you know um, I think they're going to jump into it where Batman's already existed. So he's like met Talia and Ra's al Ghul and he and Talia have bumped uglies already. And then up pops Damien from one of their rendezvous together in the past. Yeah. I mean, they'd, well, I mean, unless you saw those movies and you, if you didn't read the comics, it would kind of be hard to explain that, you know? explain it that hey there's batman there's the daughter of his number one enemy that's not the joker those two like to fuck a lot yeah <laughs> yeah and here's the byproduct of it yeah. yeah well it's it's certainly a little more inspired than what they've been doing and the idea like Zack snyder i again i i don't know that they i don't know if I didn't see the the what do you call it the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. From what I heard, it didn't yeah, really neither. improve it that much more. But I didn't have any desire to see it, to be honest with you. Uh, however, some people said this is what they should have released originally, and I'm thinking it's probably it still sounds too bloated. They could have cut it down to two hours. It didn't need to be four hours, but because I was able to watch it at home, I just yeah. set it up like it was a two part movie. Yeah. So there was still a there was a lot of bloat in it. But it was a billion times better than the thing Josh Whedon put on a movie screen. Mm -hmm. it, it just seemed more streamlined and less like weird. Because Josh Whedon stuff, it was like a, it was like the movie was fighting with itself and what it wanted to be. At least with this one, whether you agree with how Zack Snyder sees that universe or not, it was his image of it. So it all right. was more, it was more seamless. It wasn't all wacky. Yeah. Well, it's uh, hopefully it's only time will tell. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hosting for for being part of this one, being uh, being uh, uh, victims on this particular episode <laughs> and of our Skype issues, whatever. But uh, and we got the mic issues sorted out and stuff. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, we're not sure when the next one will be released, but it'll be a surprise just like this one was when it gets dropped. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Well, thanks for hosting. And it was good doing a lot of catch up on stuff. Yeah. That What's going on? For sure. There's a lot of catch up. <laughs> yeah, abs absolutely. Take care, guys. We love you. Okay, I'm going to stop recording here.